Well, I'm standing about 10 kilometers from the outskirts of Avdivka, the city that has just fallen to Russian control. Um, it's somewhere um, beyond there, a lot on the horizon, on the fields, probably not quite visible, but um, uh, with my naked eye, I can see a few um, buildings, there's the, the, some high rise blocks, which have probably been destroyed. And also to the left, the main coking plant. It used to be a mining town. Um, we're now about to go and see a Ukrainian um, artillery position um, and um, our military escort is complaining that normally with this artillery position they'd be able to use it to shell Avdivka um, and hit the Russians who are there but at the moment they can't because they haven't got any ammunition. They're saying that if they had that ammunition they wouldn't be in the position they're in now which is having to decide which villages they're now going to have to let the Russians take control of beyond Av Avdivka as they advance. The biggest problem is uh, we don't have enough of ammunition for it. Uh, I know that uh, in some countries of the city uh, there are uh, s uh, thousands of missiles which we are very neat and uh, I want to ask uh, these countries to uh, to give it to us uh, that we can fight from uh, Russian aggression. This is a stabilization point near the front line where injured soldiers are transferred by their comrades into waiting ambulances who then take them off for proper medical care further down the road. Transfers are done in a matter of minute or two and then the ambulance will shoot away this apparently has been happening 14 15 times a day at the moment this is the town of selidova about 20 miles east of avdivka um, one of the towns that's suffered quite extensive shelling over the last two years behind me is a what looks like a, a school that's taken a direct hit at some point and most of the buildings here have got some kind of damage. Every, every window's broken. Half the people have left, in fact, probably more than that. Um, uh, there's towns up and like this up and down the whole front line uh, of eastern Ukraine at the moment. Um, a couple of years ago, or certainly a year ago, there was a feeling that um, the war was going in Ukraine's favour and that people would soon be able to start coming back to these towns. Right now they feel just as much as ghost towns as ever and there is a sense once again now that um, the Russians might be coming knocking on the door once more.